weekend meeting so many amazing local villagers and getting to see a part of their lifestyle was something that I've never had the opportunity to do before, to this extent. <laughs> this place is beautiful, like the mountains are just so picturesque. Like the scenery is just out of this world. Everything was just so new and fresh for me. I had many moments of, of peace during this journey, but also like, just crazy moments where I didn't know what was going to happen next and like having to use my body to, to climb up high and pull myself around and, and do things that the locals just do every day. It was invigorating. When I arrived at the village, everyone was smiling and hiding from behind windows and doors. It was so amazing. I was transported. The culture was so different here, and I instantly got thrown in the deep end when we had to chase the rooster. I think he was set for the dinner table later. <laughs> from the moment I arrived in the village, there was a lot of talk of the, the hunting. It was a very big part of their culture, something they were very proud of. <laughs> tại sao mà gắn liền với rừng thế này? Bởi vì người Mường chủ yếu là sản xuất cây lúa là chính. Thế xong rồi đâu là dùng củi đốt cũng vào rừng để lấy, rồi đi săn bắn này, rồi là vào rừng là hái hoa quả này, rau cỏ ở trong rừng măng. Tôi mà cứ khoảng chừng mà tuần mà không vào là phải vào lại một lần để vào để xem rừng không nhớ. Apparently locals always wear the green long sleeve shirt before entering the forest. The green shirt allows you to be, remain hidden in the forest, whereas the long sleeves are necessary for the ample amounts of mosquitoes. So this is the traditional way of carrying things in this area. I guess we're going off. There was lots of farmland near the village and it took maybe 20 minutes, half an hour between leaving Mr. Toy's house and arriving outside of the farmland at the base of the mountain. And that was, that was where the forest really began. We just picked wild guava on the walk to the mountain. It's very delicious, very good. The locals say that you never go hungry around this part because there's always food. You just have to know where to look. Very good, very exciting. Đấy. <laughs> <laughs> From the moment we arrived at the mountain and the forest was, was all around us, instantly the terrain was different. It was, it was much, much harder going. I had to use my hands as much as I used my legs. We had to climb over small bits of bamboo and jump across chasms and it started getting a little bit more like an adventure. When I was told we were harvesting bamboo shoots, I thought we were going down to someone's backyard and just going to be like, oh yeah, here's the bamboo, chop it off. But we actually had to trek and climb the mountain to get there. So they were they were wild bamboo and it was yeah, it was all the it was more rewarding. On the way up the mountain to find the bamboo, we had a break by the tranquil lake. Đến đây là nghỉ đã, mệt quá rồi, không nước đã. Nước. Whilst having a break, Zung showed me some local tricks for finding where the honeybees are. 
Bak Toi's son, Zung, he, he, was, he came up the mountain with us and he, he showed many interesting ways of hunting and, and looking at nature. One of them was he found a grasshopper at one point and put it onto a blade of grass and just held onto it and was very still and waited while the bee flew around. And he watched the bee to pick off some meat from this grasshopper. And when it flew away, it would give him a sense of where the bee's nest was and where it was most likely to look. It was ingenious. I've never seen someone follow a bee's pattern before to try and find its hive. So, we're, um, we're just about to go into the forest and look for some honeybees. One's already found me, so hopefully that means that they're nearby. One of the many gifts that Mother Nature has given to the mountainous region that we're in at the moment is, is the honeybee. And the, the local people see it as, as, like, as a delicacy, but as something from, from the gods. It's, it's a gift to them. And I can see why. Okay. It will be delicious. I can't wait. Mm. I'm looking for dried leaves. We're going to try and get enough together so we can smoke out the bees. We just found a little nest over here. Okay, I'm gonna need more than this. <laughs> starting to follow me around again. They're all over my face and hat. I'm, um, I'm hoping that they will dissipate as soon as we get this fire started. Let's see how it goes. Follow me. Hang on. Okay, we're attempting to smoke out the bees. It should only be a few moments and we'll have the taste of the sweet honey. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, you can really see the, the honey just dripping out of this. Just watch, just drips and drips and drips. Very, very nice. Mm. That is the best way to eat honey ever. Hold on. Mm. Non gua. I'm gonna have honey in my beard and mustache for days. Mat om, zo vazia, mat om. Zo. I can't believe how many fruits and flavors honey can have. I suppose it's because of the the rich amount of vegetation in the mountainous area and all the different sorts of fruits and flowers that are around. It just it just makes the honey so much better. It's, it's one of the best I've ever tasted. I'm very thankful for the locals for showing me this little secret. And the bees have found me again.
I'd never seen bamboo shoots like that before. Some of them were like as tall as me, if not a bit bigger. Like it was, it was quite amazing. And to to just find the bamboo wow. shoots on the ground was, yeah. was something I've never done before. Of yeah. course, I've seen them in the market and eaten them in Hanoi, yeah. but it's not the same. This had a real connection yeah. to to the place yeah. and to nature itself. Mark, lấy dao móc chặt thế. Nào đi, đấy, đấy. Chặt mồ. Ừ. Quay này, đấy. Đấy. Rồi. Đấy, móc nó đi. <cười> đấy. 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 All we use is a big knife <laughs> and our eyes, basically. And that's it. Get into it. This is two necks. It was a great time to be surrounded by, by locals with local knowledge because I just, I learned so much from, from everyone around me and it was all because it was action time. Like we would, it was time to do things and like chop things out and dig things up and and I just learned so much while it was happening. It was great. <laughs> so we're looking for good sized bamboo shoots, but anything too big like this one here, they leave it to grow into the, into the beautiful bamboo forest around us. Meeting, meeting all the young Hmong people up, up in the mountainside was, was really nice. I, I didn't expect to see them there and everyone was very welcoming and, and full of smiles. And though we couldn't communicate as well because of some, some language difficulties, we, we all got on very well. And I love the, the fact that they can, can hold a traditional language and, an, and a language for, for use in Vietnam. Like, they're keeping the traditions alive, but still able to, to integrate with society. Yeah. It's really good. While sitting and chatting with the local youngsters, I met Yeo, the local orchid hunter. He would climb the mountains in search of the most beautiful and rarest of orchids. Yeo's job is very difficult. Often he will climb up very high and has no guarantee that there will be flowers at the top. He just has to climb and hope and sometimes it pays off. Step on. It was quite difficult, but this is what we're after. We're after wild orchids that grow in this area. I've been told they're some of the most beautiful. So, it's quite a prize. Lui, lui, daddy. Okay. I'm not afraid of snakes. I've grown up with snakes around. As long as I know I'm safe, I'm okay. But Mr. Yeo, the the flower expert, he was he was very scared, but faced up to his fear mm -hmm. quite well. But he was he was afraid of snakes. I was amazed. The rocks here are so different from where I grew up. Everything's round and granite in Australia and so much, much slipperier to climb on. Whereas here, everything is jagged and sharp with trees growing out of it. It's quite amazing. It's quite a sight. It makes the climbing a little bit easier too, I think. But we'll see how we go. We climbed quite hard. It was really impressive. The view was amazing from up there. 
but sadly, we had no result this time. All tangled up. That was quite a fun climb. <laughs> So we just climbed back down, that was, that was quite a climb, looking back up at where we were, it's pretty fun, pretty exhilarating. It's, um, it's very different from what I used to do, it's like, it's, it's sharper rocks and trees all around, you just have to use your hands and your arms, and I really think Yo is a very great teacher. Come on, come on Zit Yo. Okay. Wow. This all looks so delicious. Wow. 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 Mà có thích ở đây đi ăn như thế này không? Có. Oh, I can eat like this every day. Bóc ra. Nóng quá. Dân tộc Mường ở đây không cần đem xoang nồi, chỉ cần chặt cây làm đơn giản thành cơm ăn. Yeah, okay. Chặt heal cây. rồi, heal. All of the guides, all of the locals, they were all so so natural in their in their knowledge they knew the things that they knew not because they'd been told them by by someone but because they'd seen them and witnessed them and been a part of them grown up and saw dad do it and saw the grandfather do it and it's a real part of their their local knowledge When I was washing in the well after the after the trek, and the children all came down from the village, and they they just wanted to see the the strange foreigner. I think they hadn't seen anyone like me before. I've got a beard and dreadlocks, so so they found me quite interesting. And they came over, and were a little scared, and splashed some water at me, and I splashed back. It, it just all became very fun. And they broke down the the barrier between foreigner and local very quickly. They they had no fear at all. <laughs> <laughs> Dinner was very fun. We there was lots of drinking to be had, both Zio and Zio Gun. It was it was really delicious. Everything was so good. The hardest thing was trying to follow everyone's conversation about all the cultural significance of the hunting practices and traditions. But I learnt so much. I've never had these conversations before. To make to make one of these, it's not as simple as just carving some bamboo. You actually have to first burn the bamboo until it's all charcoal and very very hard. And that makes the that makes the bamboo stay really really straight and and hard. And so then when you shave it down and carve out the 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 arrow, you get a very hard straight well well working arrow like it, it will go in a straight line yeah <laughs> mời 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 
chỉ có uh, đi săn chưa được đâu ừ, chú trong hang và chú hiểm hóc mà chú nào nó nó không thông thoáng nó nó nhiều cái bóng cây ấy chú đấy là nhiều chuột còn mình ở sáng quá thì nó nó hay sợ tapioca is their favorite food and so we're out here on this rainy night hoping that the rain doesn't come down and yeah hopefully we'll find some rats Mệt không? Mệt Phim trường Đến chỗ rồi Đây hàng đây Để mình đặt mồi đây rồi Đấy Mồi đây rồi Ok So we've just laid some bait In that other In the cave And chopped it up So that the rats come They can smell it then And we've just gathered some Some leaves for protection We're going to hide behind them And, and see if rats appear <laughs> And then we'll strike <laughs> Làm thế này để chuột nó phải phát hiện Phát hiện ra mình ngồi ấy Mình ngồi bắn ấy Xong Cannot even see any So this is also that the rats can't see us, but we can still see into them, and hopefully we'll be able to get our kill. We were, we were out hunting for quite a while. I'm not sure on how long it was because we had I had no no phone, no clock. It was it was just us and darkness and waiting. So time could have I'm not sure how long it was. I think it was a few hours though, maybe two hours. Sitting in the dark, just waiting. <laughs> After the incident with me setting off the bowstring, I was, I didn't realize that it meant no more rats would come for a little while and I was, I was adamant to see some more rats. Chick told me rats are some of the smartest animals in the forest. As soon as they know that something is not right, they won't come back. It was a shame, but maybe next time I, I can go back and look for some more rats. Baktoy and his family were, were just amazing for me, so I really wanted him to have the first piece of art that I'd produced from this weekend. It was a small, small token of gratitude to his family from me.